Hello everyone, today in this video we will be discussing a super trick to memorize the ID3 algorithm as well as understand slightly what's happening in this algorithm and um, this is the uh, question which is given so basically we have to write a program for ID3 ID3 deals with the decision tree okay so to give you a brief overview of what is decision tree consider this example okay this example is taken from a data set okay so let's have a look at the data set first this is our data set where we have six attributes outlook temperature humidity and windy sorry four attributes are there okay so in these attributes we have different kinds of values and by using these values we are classifying it what do i mean by classification suppose that i tell you there is outlook 0 temperature 1 humidity 1 and windy is true in this case whether the person will play tennis or not play tennis if the person plays tennis it will be denoted by 1 if the person does not play tennis it will be denoted by 0 okay so we have to make a uh, guess based on the previous data whether the person will play tennis or not given the parameters okay so that guess can be made using this tree structure which will be gen generated after uh, going through the id3 algorithm this will be generated means if the uh, outlook is zero we'll be considering humidity then we'll be considering the humidity values and based on the humidity value we can classify if the person will play tennis or not play tennis okay so uh, what is this zero ones and twos so let's have a look in outlook there are totally three unique values zero one and two that denotes three kinds of values sunny overcast and rainy same goes for humidity high normal and windy false and true okay so for this we have denoted by ones and zeros now um, based on this we have to generate this tree so to remember the code you have to remember two things read the data set and if else conditions let's have a look at each of these so the code is divided into two parts this is the whole code how many lines are there 42 lines are there so this this part is for the reading code the rest is for the generating of the code so let's have a look at this uh, part of the code before that let's have a look at this uh, import statements import pandas as pd pprint um, from pprint import that sklearn import mutual info classifier because since we are classifying we, are, we have to import mutual info classifier from collections import counter counter will count the values and give us the frequencies so these four lines are done and this is the reading of the files this i'll do if you do these two only this part is remaining which is the false condition then our code will be over let's have a look at this uh, to get uh, done with the 50 percent of the code df is equal to pd dot read csv play uh, p tennis csv p tennis csv contains these values okay these whole values are read by the p tennis dot csv okay and when we have read those i uh, will be storing it in df df consists of these all values okay then we are uh, also fetching the attribute names attribute names is equal to df dot columns dot to list so what we are uh, trying to fetch is the columns uh, attribute names what are the attribute names outlook temperature humidity windy and play tennis these are uh, getting fetched in the attribute names okay and we have stored in the attribute name these values and the df will be storing the whole data set okay so after getting these two values the attribute names we are uh, removing play tennis because since we have to predict these values we do not consider these values in the attribute names after that we are uh, factorizing it in this Part. after the factorization just the printing of df then we'll call the id3 algorithm in the id3 algorithm we have df play tennis attribute names df is the data frame which is getting fast data frame consists of all these things play tennis consists of the target attribute which is nothing but these values and which we have to predict that we are uh, passing here and attribute names obviously outlook temperature humidity windy and play tennis then we are finally printing the tree structure okay so uh, in this uh, line of code id3 what we are trying to pass df uh, play tennis and attribute names this is getting stored here okay so we are just concerned about this one after this part of code it will return the tree which will be visible here okay which will be printing it here so we are just concerned with this part of the code and in this part of the code also there are three uh, divisions the first division is if condition okay let's have a look at that df is getting passed target attribute which we passed here we passed uh, play tennis here so that is getting stored in the target attribute and the attribute names you are passing which are the attribute names then what you are doing c and is equal to counter for x for x in df target attributes df of target attribute means these are target attributes df values okay data frames target attribute values this we are counting how many many zeros are there how many ones are there if that length uh, is equal to one that means all no or all yes if that's the case we'll be returning next iterate iteration cnt if it is not means if it is uh, having empty values means this attribute is not there only then we are uh, going to return default class default class means empty class okay since we cannot classify it okay like that then uh, else if these are not the cases that means there is a equal number of there's uh, some yes and there's some no which means zero and ones combination if zero and ones combination is there we are going to do the following steps so let's understand this and wind up this video in this video what we are actually trying to do is we'll be seeing the uh, which is the best classifier for example if i ask you if there is uh, going uh, what is the probability that there will be a tsunami or not 
and I'll give you the two regions. Okay, one region is I'll give you a coastal area. Second, I'll give you a dense uh, middle of Africa, that uh, place or a desert. Let's take a desert name, Sahara Desert. If I give you Sahara Desert or um, uh, Miami Beach, where is more chance that cyclone will happen or it's not cyclone, tsunami will happen. Obviously, we will tell Miami Beach. Why? Because it's a coastal area. So, which attribute you are seeing uh, for classifying whether the tsunami will happen more chances or not? You are seeing the geographical location. That's the attribute you are, which you are seeing. You can also see the temperature and all, but that's secondary. What is more relevant that you will see first. So, here also we will be selecting the more relevant attribute which is classifying uh, nicely. Outlook or temperature or humidity or wind we'll be choosing among these four how will that classification be done that's the first line of code mutual info classification the classification will be done for the attribute names target attribute and the discrete features will be true okay to select the discrete features after the classification is done we'll get the gains of each of these gains means points or the marks the more marks the more relevancy so in gains all the marks are there then we have to select which is the best one to select the best one we need the most marks so we'll select which is the most marks gains dot two list dot index max of gains which is the max of gains that index you tell me which is the max of gains that index you tell me so uh, suppose that we got outlook as the max its index is zero this is zero index one index two index three index and four index outlook got the zeroth index that will be returned to index of max in index of max i'll be selecting the attribute name attribute name of index of max that means attribute name of zero that will fetch me the attribute name that is best attribute See, the index I got as 0, so attribute names of 0 is Outlook. Outlook will be saved to best attribute. Then in next step, tree of best attribute is equal to something I am writing like for braces. So best attribute I will select as the root node. That's what I am doing here. Okay, this is the tree structure. First, I am writing the best attribute name. Then again, I will do the sub uh, iterations. See this thing, what is in blue, that is again uh, getting called the same thing. Okay, I have selected the root. Again, I have to classify as subtree. That's what I am doing here. Remaining attributes I will be selecting for i for i in attribute names, except i is equal to best attribute. Except the best attribute, all the other attributes are stored in remaining attribute names. For example, except this attribute, all the other attributes means temperature, humidity, and windy. This is the target attribute. I will not consider that one. Temperature, humidity, and windy, I will select these things and store it in remaining attribute names after i've got these attribute names i have to traverse each and form a subtree again i'll do the same thing here subtree is equal to id3 data subset i will pass instead of df see here i pass the df values the same algorithm is called id3 id3 but here i'm passing the subset value here i pass the df value subset means i'm just passing this much temperatures humidities and windy okay and i'm passing the target attribute that will remain same remaining attribute names i'll pass instead of attribute names i have to pass remaining attribute why because i'm not considering outlook it's already considered <clears throat> then when i find the answer to the subtree again by calling the same function i'll be attributing that uh, subtree to this one trees best attributes attribute value then i will be passing to uh, that will it will store here as a subtree like that i'll do for the next iteration also next iteration also when that is done i'll come to this one i'll form another subtree again i'll call the same function and then do the same things again that's happening because of this for loop each iteratively i will do and again i will come back that's uh, how it's uh, looking here also the main um, root will be there forming a subtree for each of these i'll form uh, i'll call and form this subtree then i'll come here form this subtree and come here form this subtree like that uh, the whole uh, code works and you have to remember it in this way start from here uh, read the data set and um, call the tree function come to the tree remember the codes if it is len is equal to one return this one means all no or all yes if it is empty return the default class it's empty class else find the uh, marks find the best marks get the name of the best marks who scored best marks form a tree get the remaining attributes for loop for each of the remaining attributes form a sub, uh, subset of uh, tree and attribute it to the root node like that keep on doing until you finish all the uh, classifications so that's all make sure you hit the like button subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next one